I followed an acrylic painting tutorial, but with pastels. Stay tuned to see how it turned out. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today's video was supposed to be the new scrawler box, but it hasn't arrived yet. The first stage postal sorting facility for the Avalon region was closed for a few days not too long ago because a couple employees tested positive for the virus, and apparently trailers kept getting delivered and just dropped at the edge of the lot. They're still having a heck of a time trying to get the drivers coming with new trailers to swap out old trailers instead of just filling the available bays with the trailers they're hauling. I wouldn't be surprised if my scroller box is sitting in one of those trailers waiting for its turn at the door. Something my mom mailed well over a month ago has finally arrived at the door today though, so that's a good sign. Maybe my scroller box is waiting for me as I write this voiceover. Time will tell. <laughs> anyway, today's video. I tune in to Lisa Close YouTube livestream every Wednesday night, and lately she's been doing paint-alongs. If you're not familiar with Lisa, she's Lacrie Fine Art here on YouTube. Go check her out. Well, a couple weeks ago she did a Shoreline at Night paint-along, and I didn't set up to follow because I was just going to listen and work on something else. Then someone in the chat asked if you can apply acrylic tutorial techniques to pastel painting. That sounded way more fun than trying to find inspiration for this month's Marker Universe Colors of the Month, so I quickly pulled out my gold favorite pastels and a piece of Strathmore pastel paper to try to follow along. These half-stick pastels are called soft pastels, but they're also student quality, so they're a bit harder and chalkier than, say, Royal Talon's Rembrandt soft pastels. I love using gold Faber line products if I'm going to purchase student grade supplies, because Faber Castell generally uses the same pigments between their professional and student grade lines, it's just a matter of fillers and binders that are different. Because of that, these are much more likely to be fairly light fast than products from companies that don't care about light fastness, like Prismacolor's new pastels. Now, you absolutely can use different tools to blend pastels, and if you care about the longevity of your piece, I highly recommend doing that. But this is just practice, so I'm going to do all my blending with my fingers. We started by putting down a dark navy blue night sky, and then added stars. For contrast and depth, we added stars in both white and light blue. This part, of course, looks much better in paint because you can splatter the stars and get a more natural effect. I'll admit my stars look ridiculous, and this is probably the least successful aspect of this attempt. Next, it was time to add in sand, and I had the interesting task of trying to blend the right blue-tinted dark gray-brown to match the wet sand look Lisa was getting quite effortlessly in acrylics. She also did some more splattering on the sand for texture. I had to mash the corner of my pastel into the paper again. Thankfully, the sand texture can be smudged and blended so it doesn't look as ridiculous as the stars. After the sand, it was time to fill in the ocean, working from darker blues at the horizon line and moving into lighter blues and teals at the shore. I threw in random dark and white streaks and blended them out to imply small waves on the water's surface. In preparation for adding sea foam at the water's edge, we had to add shadows on the sand first. It looks odd, but just go with it. 
We also tinted a bit of the sand more blue because as waves retreat back out, there's always a thinner layer of water that lingers on the sand. Finally, it was time to bring the white pastel back out and add sea foam to both edges of the retreating tide and ripples across that thinner layer. I really love how this turned out. I learned a lot, even though I was technically following along in the wrong medium. I'm really glad I photographed this piece as soon as I was done and not after I sealed it, because my fixative spray kind of poofed the white that's over the sand, so that second line of sea foam disappeared. Gotta fix that. If you were there for the live stream, or if you've watched the replay or seen Lisa's Instagram, then you'll know she went on to add a palm tree on the sand. But she mentioned if she were selling the piece, she would have stopped here before the tree. I happily stopped and cleaned up here. Maybe next time I'll draw the tree. Have you ever followed a tutorial with the wrong supplies? How did it go? If you're looking for something else to watch, I've put some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. I upload art content twice a week at minimum, every Tuesday and Thursday, and if you like to live life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for my monthly Art Addicts Alliance upload. It's a good one. <laughs> Bye guys!